Okay, let's get right into it. I've got seven habits that you can implement today that will change your life. And I know this because they've already changed millions of other lives, including mine. So no fluff, no gimmicks, just actionable advice today. Number one, meditation. It is absolutely essential and I cannot stress this enough. You probably know that the world right now is more distracting than ever. So it is extremely important that you guard your attention with your life. I won't go on naming all the benefits, but here are just a couple that you might like. Lower stress and anxiety, improve focus and attention span, improved emotional stability and well-being, increased self-awareness, and much more. Better sleep quality, reduced insomnia, you name it. The only thing standing between you and the life-changing benefits of meditation is your own laziness and procrastination. And I see a lot of people get confused when they hear the word meditation. You do not have to sit down in the mountains like a monk and meditate for five hours. You don't even need anything to do it. It's simply the art of doing nothing. All you need is a quiet place where you won't be disturbed in some time. And the best way to start building this habit is by starting with small increments, like five minutes a day. You can start with more time, but ultimately failure to establish this habit is what leads to failure, not the actual practice itself. So all you need to do is find a quiet place, get comfortable and let yourself exist purely in the moment and let go of any judgments, worries, or criticisms that you have in your mind. But let your thoughts go and do not try to stop them because during meditation, you're not actively doing anything. You're just being. So don't worry if you find your thoughts wandering, just observe them and let them flow freely. Habit number two is journaling. We go through life, stuff happens, we move on, but do we ever really reflect on the stuff that happens? We rarely do, which is exactly why journaling is so powerful. All you have to do is at the end of the day, write down what happened. Who did you meet? What did you do? What did you eat? You know, how did you feel write it all down and you might say well i already experienced it why do i have to write it down well when you write things down you're forced to think about it you're forced to reflect you become aware of what you're doing throughout the day and it isn't about either criticizing yourself or patting yourself on the back too much it's about becoming more self-aware journaling is just like your own personal reality check and when you start to see the patterns of behavior that are laid out on paper it'll be a lot harder to ignore what you need to work on you also get to record your entire journey like imagine two years from now looking back at a journal entry and thinking how much you've changed because it, you're gonna change a lot. All it takes is 10 to 15 minutes per day, maybe less. And after like 30 days, I promise you, you will start to see the changes. Habit number three is exercise. And this might seem obvious, but so many people neglect it. There are so many different benefits and you already know probably a lot of them, but our minds can only express their true power within a strong and healthy body. If your primary goal is to build strength, then you would focus on strength training, which is lower reps, higher weight. If you're trying to build muscle, that's hypertrophy, which is moderate weight, moderate reps, like eight to 10, 12-ish. And if you're trying to build muscular endurance, you go higher. 15, 20 reps. But the primary objective is to build strength and discipline that will carry over in every single aspect of your life. All the while, you'll be sculpting a body that serves as a powerful vessel for your mind. Again, I don't want to go too in depth on the details of how to train, but all you need is three to four days a week and you don't even have to lift for longer than 30 minutes to an hour. If you don't have access to a gym, you can do bodyweight workouts, you can do cardio, you can run. Just get active. That's all you need to do. You are putting out effort into the world and you are seeing results, tangible results. Not only will you become healthier and more physically capable, but you will learn things that will translate over into every single aspect of your life. Habit number four might be a little bit unfamiliar, but it is reconstructing your inner monologue. So what does that mean? You know that voice in your head that talks literally all the time? That voice, if left unchecked, can literally define your entire life. And you might not even realize what it's doing to you, but if you're saying to yourself, like, I'm a failure, I suck, I'm a loser, you're going to believe it over time, even if you don't think you will. The things you tell yourself ultimately shape your actions. They shape your behaviors. They shape everything. They shape how you live your life. If you tell yourself things that are negative, things that don't serve you, they are going to come out in the world through you. Reframing how you talk to yourself is essential. Like think about people who just focus on problems instead of solutions. They always have a tough time finding their way out of stuff. It's always what is, why is this happening to me and not what can I do about it? Because when you focus so much on problems, you attract more of them into your life. This type of energy is just a negativity magnet. And before you know it, you're just going to be surrounded and you will not be able to see a way out. But the good news is that you can control this inner monologue. You can use it to your advantage. So just imagine if you could talk to yourself like a friend that you knew who was in trouble. Would you be destructive, discouraging, unsupportive, or would you be encouraging, constructive, and supportive? So why would you not talk to yourself the same exact way? As you start to talk to yourself in a more positive way, you're going to notice how it affects you. You're going to feel happier. You're going going to feel better. When you are in a good relationship with yourself, it radiates energy that affects the entire world around you. Everyone can see it. But if you're not, people can see that too. If you don't like yourself, people probably won't like you either. Just having an optimistic outlook on life will make everything so much easier. There's literally no reason to be a pessimist. It doesn't serve anybody. It doesn't serve you and it won't serve the people that you talk to or encounter. Whenever you get a negative thought, reframe it into a positive one. So instead of like, I can't do this, 
Maybe it's, I can't do this now, but I will be able to. The more you do this, the more you change your thoughts to be more positive, the less those negative thoughts will come. And the more you will see the world change around you for the better. These last three habits will not be addition. They will be subtraction. These are habits that you need to remove from your life, not add. So number five is no pornography. I, and I won't go too far into this because you know it's bad. You know you shouldn't be watching it. But if you're not convinced yet, let me try and explain it to you. When you do this, your brain is flooded with dopamine, which is an extremely powerful chemical. It is a feel good chemical, but it comes when you watch other people, other people, not yourself on a screen, have sex. How odd does that sound? Your sexual energy, if you are a man, is the most powerful force that you have. And if you just go spewing it out and just using it for nothing, you're not going to have any energy to go live your life. If you've been watching it for a while or you are extremely addicted, it might be hard to get rid of it, but please do not go searching like no fap groups or how to quit porn. This might seem counterintuitive, but the more you think about quitting, the more you think about not watching porn, the more likely you will be to cave in. Like again, don't underestimate the power of your mind. If you tell yourself you're quitting something, you're reinforcing the idea that you're giving up something that you enjoy. So you need to shift your identity to someone who just does not watch it. I do not watch it. That's it. Because right now, if you are addicted to it, it is part of your identity and that has to leave. It has to detach from you. Okay. Habit number six is no gossiping. Whenever you gossip or you talk about other people, you are taking the focus off of your own life and putting it on the lives of others. Think about the people that you know that are always talking about other people. They're gossiping all the time. You probably notice that they also do not live their own lives fully. But imagine a world where your life is not cluttered with all this extra information and noise about other people. A world where you invest your energy into writing your own story instead of dissecting someone else's. You see, people who gossip all the time will assert their values by criticizing other people and they'll come from a place of superiority, which makes no sense at all. It's like, did you, did you see what Emily posted on Instagram the other day? It's ridiculous. Like who cares, dude? Like if all you're worried about is what other people are doing, like do you have time to worry about what you are doing? So in order to do this, not only do you have to stop doing it yourself, but stop being around people who gossip all the time because you are gonna probably feel compelled to start gossiping with them. So not only do I want you to stop gossiping, but I want you to start giving one compliment per day to anybody. If you're at the gym, tell the gym bro he's looking jacked. Or if you're hanging out with friends, just tell one of them you like their shoes or something. Like it can be so simple. It costs you absolutely nothing. And all it does is spread positivity. So just be nice to people and don't gossip. Just it's that easy. So the last habit is no complaining. And this kind of ties in with gossip, but it's a little bit different. If you know what a chronic complainer sounds like, you know that they are the most draining people to be around. They will find a reason to complain about anything. But what does this actually do? Does it bring us a sense of satisfaction? Does it make us happy? Does it make us feel fulfilled? Are we actually doing anything to solve the issue? No, because complaining pins our attention on external factors that we have no control over most of the time. And if you complain all the time, there people will not want to be around you. People do not like people who are just miserable all the time. I hate to say it because life is not going to pan out exactly how you want it to. You have to make a mindset shift. That's like life is not happening to me. It's happening for me because most of the things that you complain about and worry about all the time just simply don't matter. So just focus on what you can control and just try and find the best in every single situation. Don't let yourself complain. So to recap, we have meditation, journaling, the gym, reconstructing your inner monologue, no porn, no gossiping, no complaining. It's seven. Implement them today and I promise you're going to feel so much better. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will answer every single one. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you later.